Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I'll never apologize for keeping housing costs low when I was the Minister of Housing. But if you were hoping for some interest rate relief today as a mortgage holder, as someone with a small business loan or a line of credit, you got some bad news that the Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Rates are staying high long because, as the Governor of the Bank of Canada said, if government spending grows, then interest rates will have to stay high to combat the resulting inflation. Why won't the Prime Minister accept my common sense plan to fix the budget with a dollar for dollar law to bring down rates? The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, it's possible to be prudent fiscally and have strong social programs exactly. as well. That's exactly yes. what our government does with the AAA yeah, yeah, you're not doing the that though. to GDP ratio in the G7 and with historically low unemployment. At the same time, we have a national school food program on the table of one billion dollars, Mr. Speaker. Supports for child care and early learning, as well as for renters and homeowners. That's what we do on this side of the house. Every day is a great day to fight for Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Every day is not a great day when you're living in a tent city That's or when right. you've had your mortgage double or when, when, you're one of, when you are uh, with the families of one in four children who can't get enough food and they put forward a food program that doesn't have any food. Right. Instead, what they've done is doubled the national debt and driven up interest rates. Today we learned that the Bank of Canada is unable to bring rates down because the price Prime Minister continues to make massive multi-billion dollar inflationary spending. Why won't he follow my common sense plan to bring down the deficit and the rates? The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Wages are growing faster than inflation. Under the Conservatives, poverty was at 14.5 per cent. When we replaced the Conservatives, we brought it down to 7.4 per cent. Mr. Speaker, we will continue to invest in Canadians with the supports for affordable housing, for renters, for early learning and child care. And because of our work, we will make life fairer for Canadians unlike the Conservative leader who is here for himself. Thank you. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, we're finding out today from the Bank of Canada that the Prime Minister is not worth the cost. In September, the bank governor said that if government spending were to grow, then interest rates would have to stay high. That was echoed by the former bank governor and incoming Liberal leader, Mark Carney, who indi indicated that, that he does not expect rates to, qu to fall quickly and that that is partly because of a lack of fiscal discipline. So if he won't listen to me, why won't he listen to his successor and understand that he is not worth the cost of high interest rates? The Honourable Minister for Innovation. <laughs> Order. <laughs> the Honourable Minister for Innovation. Mr. Speaker, I hope the Conservative will listen this time because Canadians are watching at home. Mr. Speaker, we will take no lessons from the Conservative. On this side of the House, we have a plan to build more houses. We have a plan to build more prosperity in this country. We have a plan to create more jobs, Mr. Speaker. On the other side, they have slogan, Mr. Speaker. Canadians are smart. They understand that slogans don't build homes. They understand that slogans don't create jobs. They understand that slogans don't create prosperity. Mr. Speaker, Oh, easy there, buddy. <laughs> it's, it's horrible English. Slogan, don't build homes. Slogan, don't build... Bro. <laughs> you can tell French is Champagne's first language. <laughs> oh, man. Si on continue comme ça, je suis... If this goes on, I'm certain 
that the honorable member for La Prairie will think that it's about him, the honorable member for La Prairie. Mr. Speaker, for three weeks, the Prime Minister has been making pre-budget announcements in Quebec jurisdiction, but not today. Today, he is at the foreign interference inquiry, so he doesn't have time for domestic in interference. Health, schools, housing, dental care, child care. It's the Liberals, not the Bloc, who think they are governing Quebec. Ottawa has the money, but Quebec has the expertise. If Ottawa wants to help Quebec, it should just increase transfers. What is this government waiting for? The Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's always a good time to speak about the impacts that government investments have for Quebecers. Let's start with child care, a $6 billion investment over four years, which will help families and especially women. 35,000 new child care spots which will, of course, help families, which will reduce poverty, increase gender equality, help children, all while respecting Quebec jurisdiction. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. Mr. Speaker, this is a real budget striptease, one little piece at a time. At the rate it's going, the budget <laughs> lockdown on April 16th will be no longer than five minutes. There will be nothing left to announce. And what will be left to spend after using billions of dollars to interfere with Quebec's jurisdiction? I know that competence would interfere with this Liberal government's brand. Look at Phoenix, passports, arrive can, asylum seekers. But that's no reason to violate Quebec jurisdiction. Could this government please transfer money instead of interfering? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to answer another question, to give a second example of how we're working well with Quebec on housing this time. $1.8 billion in an agreement that was signed a few weeks ago that will enable Quebec to build more affordable housing than ever before, which will greatly benefit Quebecers especially lower-income Quebecers. The Honourable Member from Burnaby South. Yesterday, the Assembly of First Nations made it clear that this government is letting down Indigenous people. Right now, the Indigenous funding gap in infrastructure has risen to an astronomical $350 billion. That's not just a number on paper. That means Indigenous people are living in moldy homes. That means Indigenous people don't have access Yawn. to clean drinking water. Why did this Liberal government turn their back on Indigenous people? The Honourable Minister. You are the government. You vote with the government. Mr. Speaker, for decades and decades, Canada has underinvested in Indigenous communities, and this government is putting a stop to that. We've increased funding for housing on First Nations by 1,100 percent, Mr. Speaker. And while we know there is a long way to go, I want to thank the AFN for co writing this report with us. It's a very important to understand the size of the gap so that we can work even more quickly to close it together. It's not just Indigenous people that this government is letting down. It's also Canadians living with disabilities. Right now, Canadians living with disabilities are disproportionately living in poverty. And according to Angus Reid, 90 percent of Canadians support a Canadian disability benefit. But this Liberal government continues to delay the implementation of this benefit, and the Conservatives voted against it. So why is this government continuing to delay? Enough is enough. Person when in the background, you support checks? it. When will people actually get the benefit? Here, here. The Honourable Minister for Diversity, Inclusion and Disability, People with Disabilities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Member knows extremely well the Canada Disability Benefit is another concrete step to reduce, reduce poverty and to support Canadians who need it the most, Mr. Speaker. This is our top priority. We're on track to deliver the benefit, Mr. Speaker. In the spirit of nothing without us, I want to take an opportunity to thank the disability community for their relentless advocacy and for the work that they have been doing, Mr. Speaker. I've, we will I've never get it seen right this. And we will get MP it out before. for Canadians. 
is living with disabilities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Minister of Diversity and Inclusion. The member from Dufferin Culloden. Tina from okay. Orangeville just sent me a photo from the Orangeville Food Bank. There's no juice, there's no cereal, and there's almost no diapers. This is because the people who used to donate food are now lined up for food. This is actually Canada after eight years of this corrupt, incompetent NDP Liberal government. That's right. Will the Prime Minister Good finally problems. show he has even a modicum of compassion for Canadians? Pass Conservative Bill C-234 that will take all carbon taxes off all farmers so Canadians can once again afford food. The Honourable Minister for Thank Natural you, Resources Speaker. and Energy. It is important in this country and certainly Canadians understand that we address the climate crisis that is uh, facing us. There are significant costs that we are facing, including issues around wildfires as we move forward, if we do not address climate change. But it is also important that we do that in a manner that is affordable. Eight out of ten Canadians get more money back from the carbon rebate than they pay in the, in the price on pollution. If you are going to take it away, as the leader of the opposition would do, you are actually attacking the poorest members in our society. Shame on you. I'm going to ask uh, all members, please, to uh, not take the floor until all um, until the person who has the microphone uh, has the opportunity to speak to all members, so we can hear the questions clearly, and we can also hear the answers clearly. The honourable uh, member from Dufferin Caledon. The great liberal lies. The budget will balance itself, and the rebate check is larger than the cost of the carbon tax. Everyone knows that is not actually what's happened. And you know who else has joined the carbon tax revolt? Six premiers in this country who are calling for a carbon tax summit. Newfoundland and Labrador, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Ontario, Saskatchewan, and Alberta. Will this out-of-touch prime minister actually call this conference the carbon tax summit? Or is he too busy hiding because he called the premiers liars? Good question. So, colleagues, I'd like to remind all colleagues on all sides of the house uh, that it's, we must be very careful about using the word uh, lies. Although it wasn't directed at an individual, um, it is really important that we not use language, as you know, that uh, it can be disturbing uh, and can disturb the affairs of the House. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Look, on this side of the House, we actually believe in facts and we believe in science. The Honourable Member makes statements that actually have zero basis in fact. 200 economists in this country signed a letter last to two weeks ago saying that 8 out of 10 Canadians get more money back. The Parliamentary Budget Officer says that 8 out of 10 Canadians get money back. They can make up all the things that they want to, but the facts are on our side. It is an, an, an issue that addresses affordability for Canadians particularly those on modest incomes. It is a plan to address climate change. Those reckless, irresponsible Conservatives on the other side of the House should be ashamed. Again, I'd like to remind members to please stay away from language. That could be... Uh, that certainly it's getting close, closer and closer to unparliamentary. The Honourable Member from Chilliwack... Hope